Welcome to The Controversial Truth, where we bring you content on health and wealth that no one would ever tell you until now. I'm your host, Dr. Victoria Munoz, and I'm pleased to present a very special guest today. Dr. Ana Laura, graduated from Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine, now Sonoran University in 2017. She specializes in the treatment of chronic disease and runs a very successful private practice in Phoenix, Arizona. She spends her spare time continually educating herself and bringing the best medicine to her patients. She also spends time working out in a kickboxing gym, hiking Arizona trails, and spending time with family and friends. She is not only a brilliant doctor, but a colleague and a good friend. Dr. Ana Laura, it is an honor to have you here today. We have so much to cover. Yes, a lot. So I, I'd like to start out by talking about what sets naturopathic medicine apart from the conventional medical arena. Like, for example, what is naturopathic medicine? Let's just start there. Absolutely. Um, I think a lot of people are used to the conventional medical system of what th that experience is like, um, but when they're that ha hasn't worked for them. You know, they, they've gone to doctors and specialists and they haven't gotten any improvements. You know, they still feel sick. Um, they st people start to seek out of that model and, um, you know, they start to look for different ways that they can possibly heal. So when people find, a, they look for an naturopathic doctor, they're looking for a whole different approach. And that's, and that's what we're about. We are completely different than a conventional medical doctor. So one of the things that sets us apart is that we are looking for the root cause of disease. We're looking at all the areas of a, of a person's life, right? That's what, how we were trained to do. We look at their eating habits. We look at their sleep habits. We look at, you know, are they exercising or not? Do they sit a lot? Uh, what is their stress? You know, stress plays a huge component in in a person's you know health so what is what are their stressors like are they drinking water you know are they consuming a lot of sugar um, what's their lifestyle like and we do lifestyle medicine that's what we do yeah yeah mm -hmm. so we need to take a look at all of that and in order to do that we really focus on developing relationships with our patients you know they're not just a number right we or need to yeah well, they're not just a diagnosis I know a lot of people ask me well Dr. Law, what do you do uh, what kind of uh, conditions do you see? Well, I don't treat conditions, I don't treat symptoms. I work with people. Mm -hmm. And in order to do so, we need to get to know those individuals that we're gonna work for, that we're gonna be helping. And so you need to develop a relationship on trust, on respect, and people need to feel comfortable telling us their life, sharing their life. So when they come see a naturopathic doctor, a lot of people are not used to, you know, um, spending an hour with a patient, not even 30 minutes with a, with their doctor, right? right. Yeah. They're not used to spending 30 minutes with their doctor. It's usually five minutes and if they're lucky, five minutes and, and a the prescription and they're out the door. Here's your prescription, yeah. we'll see you in a month. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't blame the doctors necessarily, the medical doctors, it's the system. That's the way that system is set up. It's to uh, be quick. They got to see 20, 30 plus pe people in a day in order to work in that insurance model. Otherwise, right. they, they're they not gonna be in business. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we slow that process down. We're, we're looking at the quality of the relationship between the doctor and the patient. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole different experience. And this is where I, where, why I tell people, like you cannot compare what a naturopathic doctor does and a medical doctor, because we're on completely different paradigms, completely different paradigms. Our approach is different. Our relationship style is different. The modalities that we use to treat people, completely different. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that, how it's different. Like, I know I've talked in 
uh, previous episode how MD, MD medical students, they, they take about 18 credit hours a term. They have summers off. They only have didactics for the first two years. And then the last two years are just clinicals and they're done. And naturopathic medical students have a tremendous load in school. So tell us a little bit about that. About the experience as a medical student? Yeah, or? like what they what they experience in terms of like, you know, we're taking 32 credit hours right. of time for the full <laughs> four years yeah. in, and clinicals and the load that's involved and the different clinical um, exams that we have to take each year to pass for that year right. to move on. So I think what a lot of people may not know about naturopathic doctors is that we do all the hardcore sciences too. Yeah. All the physiology, anatomy, you know, anatomy, physiology, the, the microbiology, the biochemistry, gastroenterology, we do all of those. We have to, pharmacology, you know, a lot of people don't know that we study pharmacology and they think why if you're using natural medicine. Well, in the state of Arizona, we can't prescribe medications. Um, however, we also need to understand, right, the contraindications of if someone's on a certain medication and we're going to give them an herbal medicine or we're going to make other changes, we need to know what the contraindications. We need to make sure it's safe for them. So we still need to understand the pharmacology. So yeah, we are medical doctors. On top of all the medical sciences, you know, uh, people don't even know that we learn how to do minor surgery. Mm -hmm. You know, during COVID, I was like a little, uh, you know, urgent care doing minor surgery on people who didn't want to go to the hospital. Um, and so they were happy to know that, hey, their naturopathic doctor is trained and can perform that minor surgery, whether it's to remove a cyst or they got cut and you do stitches. Like that's what we're trained to do. Right. We are medical doctors. Mm -hmm. On top of that, you know, from the beginning, we are trained to integrate all the natural modalities, right? We learn all the nutrition. I mean, we have a whole year of nutrition, which most doctors don't. I think they have like a couple hours maybe of they nutrition. They don't have any. Or any. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a whole year of nutrition. And it's not just nutrition based on like what a registered dietitian does. Like we learn how to use uh food as medicine mm -hmm. and uh, create right certain diets for certain medical conditions. So it's, it's clinical nutrition. How do we apply that? Uh, we're learning all the botanical medicine, um, all the uh, traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, the Chinese herbs, right? Uh, we're learning physical medicine. We're learning homeopathy. We're learning mind-body medicine. So if you really took all the different tools, all the different areas of natural medicines that we learn, it's like another four or five degrees on top of a medical degree. Mm -hmm. So it's it's ludicrous, you know, when people ask me, well, what is it, how was a naturopathic doctor trained? And I explain all these areas that we learn, they realize, wow, that's, that's a lot. And it's really hard to spend that kind of time in four years and, and mind you, the, the last two years of our training, we are seeing patients in clinic. Yeah. So we're getting exposure uh, in a clinical setting, implement applying these concepts right to our patients to learn how to integrate in, in from the beginning and assessing labs and imaging and you know doing all the diagnostic work still because that we are medical doctors, but on top of that, it's the natural side that we we start with. I don't think that natural medicine should be the alternative medicine. I think that should be the beginning stages of helping people. Mm -hmm. We start with the least invasive and we work our way up from there. Obviously, if someone's leg, you know, is if they're cut open and bleeding, yeah, go to the ER. Right. Don't come see a nature pad. Yeah. <laughs> There's a time and place for everyone. Yeah. Uh, but for most people with chronic, you know, uh, conditions, um, there needs to be an integration of nutrition and making sure they're sleeping, making sure they're, there's a lot of benefits of exercise. It's not just to be thin and look great. I mean, that's, that's a benefit, right? Sure. Yeah. But there's a lot of um, medical um, benefits for a person to be moving their body. I, I always say the creator created our bodies to move. Otherwise he wouldn't give us a, you know, skeletal muscle and bones and all of that structure. Yeah. Our bodies are meant to move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And many of you don't know what metabolic syndrome is, but it's basically overweight, high blood pressure, diabetes, on and on and on. And metabolic syndrome is a 
precursor, for lack of a better term, to cancers. It really <laughs> yeah. is. You know, people think yeah. that cancer is a genetic disease. It's not. It's a lifestyle disease. It really is. You know, when I screen my patients, I look at their insulin numbers and their C peptide, whether there's a history of it or not. And it is amazing to see how many people who are not diabetic, they have, uh, you know, high levels of insulin. And so that creates an inflammatory process and that, those, that insulin, high insulin, I mean, you're fasting, right? And you're doing this test. Uh -huh. It should not be elevated. You, right. you have an eight. Right. <laughs> so why 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 is your body pumping out so much insulin? That's mm -hmm. a problem, and this is a precursor to developing cancer. Uh, uh, just recently, I had a 21 year old female, really high levels of, of insulin. Um, you know, I think the range is under 24, 25 fasting. Hers was 55, mm -hmm. and uh, in a fasting state. And she she came in to see me because she has. Um, these um, cysts that she noted on her breast. We did ultrasound, we did imaging, it's benign. Um, I gave her recommendations, you know, diet and what we're gonna do to lower the insulin and so forth. I mean, this is very standard American diet, you know, just a lot of sugar, a lot of processed foods. She did none of what I told her to do. I don't know why, you know, I scream my patients to make sure they're gonna, it takes work. <laughs> and she's 21, she's in college, she's around friends. It's a so social thing for them, I get it. So then she calls, you know, a little hysterical because she noted that she has more of those uh, lumps in her breast and not just on one side, but now it's the other. And I asked her, well, did you change your diet? Did you do the, the did you follow the regimen? And she was on and she said, no. And I said, well, what do you expect? You're gonna get more of this and it's benign now, but this can turn into a cancer. So let's get on it. Let's make the changes. You, we've already discussed this. And that really scared her. And so she started, you know, working on the diet, taking the supplements, uh, the herbal stuff, everything moving, starting to exercise more to give her body time to reverse this because it can be reversed. Whatever you did to get there, you can undo to reverse it. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of people don't realize. And that's what the convention is not going to tell people. Mm -hmm. They will prescribe you all these medications for the symptoms you're having, but they never address the root cause. They never address the root cause. The other thing that naturopathic doctors, that we really aim for, I would say at least the majority of us, is that we don't want to see you every month. No. <laughs> you know? We don't want to see you every month. No. I mean, I love my patients, I really do. But it makes me feel good to see them improve and reverse disease. And then guess what? They just come back when they need to see me. Right. When if they're acutely ill and they can't get over something, um, that they'll come see me, um, and and they'll refer other people because they got results. You know, Absolutely. and that's how I stay in business. That's how we stay in business. Yeah, right. Because we actually help people get better, mm -hmm. and then they spread the good word to everyone else, and that's it. I don't want to see them every month. I mean, that's the most discouraging patient for me is the person that is coming every month and they're not doing their part. So they're, they're seeing some changes, but they're not, I know they're not seeing the optimal changes they could possibly see because they're not being compliant even halfway there. Right. So it's, it's kind of discouraging to me. It's like, I can't care more about your health than you. Right. That, that's an unhealthy uh, relationship. If I care more about my patient's health than they do about their own health, it's, it's not gonna work. We gotta meet halfway. We gotta meet halfway. Yeah. I'm willing the to meet doing all the work. Yeah, there's no 80-20 no, in, no. in this kind of medicine. So here's what I tell patients when I, before I decide to you know start working with them. I tell them, the way I work with patients is that I want them to be in the driver's seat when it comes to taking care of themselves and their health. You have to participate. This is your body. This is your body you're in. Not It's not my body. Right. And I want you to be in the driver's seat and I'm going to provide you the roadmap. All you got to do is, is make sure your car is fueled. It's in running condition. Tires have air. Change the oil good. once in a while. Change the oil. Come on. I mean. Rotate the tires. Rotate the tires. <laughs> you know, do, do the maintenance stuff on there. And I'm going to provide you the roadmap. And you just have to follow the instructions. And if you lose your way in that roadmap, in that plan, that's fine. That I'm here to guide you back on there. But it takes a partnership, and that is what sets, a, sets us apart from conventional medicine. They don't do that. 
Yeah. They don't care to educate people. Absolutely not. They don't, not at all. Mm -mm. You know, uh, that's the a contrary. Threat. That's a threat to their profits. It is. Yeah. It's, it's the contrary. They don't think that people are capable of learning and understanding. They want you to be dependent on them. Right. So let's talk a little bit about that. What, what are we taught as we go through the education system and by the government and the media? What are we taught as we grow up and what is it, what's required to change our thinking? Yeah, it's a great question. I think from your generation to mine to what it's now, completely different. You know, um, we, what, what's being kind of indoctrinated right now is very different. You know, where right now, young people are being uh, taught in a way to be dependent and almost like a victim-like mentality mm -hmm. so that you can depend on someone else. Like, well, you're not giving, I'm not being given enough information. <clears throat> we saw this in medical school too, yeah. where the younger generations, they were dependent on the teachers giving them exactly what they needed to know. And it's called reading your textbooks, you know, doing the research, right. doing your work. Um, yeah, you can ask questions, but it's almost like there's a, you feel privileged, like you should give me the information without me seeking for the answers. And there's, there's something very, um, you know, important in when you become a seeker in life, you know, you're the kind of person that's searching for answers, you will find the answer mm -hmm. versus the person who is waiting for the answer to arrive. Good luck, honey. <laughs> Good luck. Opportunities don't come knocking at your door. No. You have to go out and seek it, and you have to look for those opportunities and knock on doors. And the same thing comes with anything in our life, health, finances, starting a business, career, or anything. Right. We've got to go out and look for the information. So the mindset is really, really key. It's really important. Is taking yourself out of that victim-like mentality. Nobody owes you anything. Right. Nobody owes you nothing. Uh -huh. Not even not your doctor. Not your doctor. <laughs> your, it's true though. Not your doctor, not the government, not your teachers. Yeah. Nobody owes you anything. And if you can just feel like, okay, nobody owes me anything. Now I am the one in that, in that seat that has to make the decision, make the call. What do I want? What do I want for myself, for my life, the direction I'm heading? And then you start seeking the answers. Now you're gonna find people that are willing to help you and sure. will collaborate. But that's when you support. put that focus and intention yeah. out there, the right people the in the right, right circumstances. People. Absolutely. Yeah. You attract, you attract that. I'm very you gotta be very intentional. That's the other thing with uh -huh. minds. You have to be very intentional and be very careful about what you're thinking about, what you're saying about what the things that you want in life, because you will manifest, manifest, man, manifest those things. Whether good it's bad. good or bad, <laughs> you're yeah. going to make it happen. Right. You know, I mean, I teach my kids that, you know, uh, my oldest is, has this great ability to manifest what she likes. Since the time she was a baby, I noticed that in her. Mm -hmm. And she did good at manifesting the things that she wanted. Everything she wanted, she would accomplish it. But something happened around the age of 9 and 10 that fear started to set in. Uh. And so then I was mindful of her behavior, her how she was when she was afraid that she would manifest those things. And so I would tell her, hey, baby girl, you gotta be careful what you're thinking about, how you're feeling about it. You can't fester on that thought and idea too long because that fear you have, you're gonna make it happen. Mm -hmm. Just the same way you've been able to manifest these other things, you know, and, and they happen, you're gonna make these things happen. And I constantly have to tell her, watch your thoughts, watch your feelings, watch your thoughts, watch your feelings until she caught on and said, you're right, if I think about this too much, it becomes true, good or bad. So imagine if we have someone like that in our life that's speaking to us that way. Hey, Dr. Munoz, be careful what you're thinking because you're gonna make it happen, uh -huh. good or bad, right? And we need those people in our life, friends or business partnerships or coaches. Yeah. You know, why not invest in, into these sort of resources to help change the way our mind works and that's what naturopathic doctors do yes so you're not just getting a doctor you're getting an educator someone's yeah. going to help you in the healing process you're going to get an advocate but in essence we are coaches to our patients because i find myself i'm sure you find yourself doing the same thing too 
where we are coaching our patients on mindset. You know, um, if, for example, if I diagnose someone with a condition, whether it's autoimmune cancer, so it's the, I'm, I'm the one sharing the diagnosis with them for the first time, I always prepare them and tell them, hey, this is just information. I don't want you to get attached or marry the diagnosis. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's not for you to take it on as this is me now. It's not you. It's just something you have. It's just information. But here, we have some tools. We have some steps on what we're going to do. We have an, a, a plan of action, right, mm -hmm. of what we're going to do to treat this and to assess it again to see the progression of this. And I always say the progression, not to see if it works. Right. We're not going to see if it works. It's it going to work. work. It's going to work. It's going to work. And I know it's going to work because I've seen it work. Right. We've seen these things work. We know it works. Otherwise, why would we tell them to do it? Exactly. And so um, it's little things like that, that it matters how we share information to people. You know how many patients have told me how traumatizing their experience was with the medical doctor because of how they shared and conveyed information to them? It was demoralizing to them. Oh. It robbed them of hope. We give hope to our patients. We're, we're, we're on the opposite end. And so you, you working with, an, someone working with a naturopathic doctor, you're getting the best of the best. You really are. There's different ways of giving a message, right? I mean, like let's say patient has a diagnosis of cancer. You can either instill doom and gloom, or you can say, hey, but we have a solution to this problem. Absolutely. And, and I am in that role where sometimes I am diagnosing and saying, hey, there's a thyroid cancer, but here's my approach to this. Yeah. And here's what I recommend, you know, and I recommend we start now and we, we go through the diet and the other therapeutics that I use for oncology and they're on board with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that or you go see an oncologist and I always refer to refer them to an oncologist, whether they decide to follow through, that's on them. Yeah. That's their choice. Um, but most people, once again, they come see a naturopathic doctor because they want a different approach. Mm -hmm. And um, so they, they follow the yellow brick road, <laughs> right? Yeah. They follow the steps, they show up for the treatments. And, and guess what? When we do imaging, we do lab work, things are improving. Great. Let's keep moving forward. I'll even go a step further uh, and, and share with them. Um, don't go telling everyone you have cancer. Yeah. Don't go telling everyone your medical history. You know, 2020 made it uh, very demoralizing for people that they felt they had to need the need to share their medical history or their decisions on medical treatment. And that is a private, that is a private um, experience. And you don't have to share your medical history with just anyone. Right. No one has a right to tell you, we're gonna go there. No one has a right to ask you, did you get your COVID vaccine? Absolutely. That's they, that you don't, you don't, yeah. you don't ask that. If you're a medical doctor and you're asking for certain reasons, I ask that question because I want to know what labs do I need to be screening this person for to help them with preventative illness in the future. Mm -hmm. That's my goal. It's not to judge them. It's not to make them feel bad for their choices. Not at all. That was your choice, and I'm going to respect that. However, my role is to keep you healthy and alive. How can I better guide you in your healthcare? Um, and so, um, and we saw this a lot. You know, a lot of people yeah. making each other feel bad for their choices of Doesn't healthcare. Doesn't belong on social media. Yeah, I mean, nobody. Yeah. You know, I, I don't bash anyone for eating their cheeseburger and fries and then having some ice cream and just sitting all day. I, I don't. Even when people share that with me, I listen to them. I try to understand why are they making these these decisions. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, there's always um, you know stress involved in that picture. And there's mental health involved in that picture, trauma. And someone with a lot of trauma is going to usually, not all the time, but will make poor decisions when it comes to their health. They're trying to, uh, you know, numb and sedate and feel better through food. You know, we talk about addiction and many other sense of the word of, of addiction, but we never really look at and talk about how the number one source that's really abused is food. Yeah. And People don't realize how addictive food is and how it can actually poison us. Absolutely. I, I talk about that a lot, is, you know, how even buying pharmaceuticals and supplements off the shelf can work against your health. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh man, I've seen people really put themselves in a bad, you know, picture 
by taking, uh, supplementing themselves with what they thought was okay. And then they end up having, you know, so many issues. Or on Google that. saying, oh, I must have this, I must, I must need vitamin C, or I must need right. thiamine, or, you know, it just, it gets crazy. Right, it really does. My joint hurts, I'm going to go get some glucosamine. Well, the stuff you get off the shelf doesn't even have right. what it says in it most of the time. Yeah. So The quality's not there. Right. The quality of the supplements are not there usually. And that's another reason to work with the naturopathic doctor is that we are trained in understanding what's safe what to use for what conditions, mm -hmm. how much, right? How frequent, how long to use it for, what tests, what things do we need to screen for right. before we recommend that. And then the quality of the products that we use, it's not what you get at GNC or other you know, stores. You know, right. It's just not the same. So that's why when people come see us, they feel better off for the things we've given them. It's, it's a quality product, you know, and it makes a difference. It really does. Yeah. That's where we get results. That's why we get results. And I and people will ask me, they'll bring in all their supplements and they're all, you know, <laughs> not good quality ones. They're like, cheap. I don't, I don't even want to look at this. Yeah, and I'll tell you know, I don't know how, <laughs> how beneficial this is for you. Um, I know what my what these products will do. I know they work, I know how they work. Um, I don't know if this is actually doing anything for you. Um, oftentimes I have them stop some of those things and then have them just stay on the most on the priority and they'll see a difference on that you know because and that's where the guidance comes in it's not just as easy as let's just get some vitamins off this you know online somewhere at the store yeah and treat yourself the one thing i will tell people that you can do at home without having to see a doctor is just eat right and move your body <laughs> and sleep well and drink water like the do basics. what we were meant to do right yeah yeah you know <laughs> our ancestors you know 100 years ago they didn't need to be told you know, um, you know, to move the, their body. You know, my parents grew up without having a vehicle in their in their town. They didn't yeah. have cars. They walked everywhere. Mm -hmm. So uh, my mom, you know, my mom had nine kids, and they came to this country. I, me and my younger brother were born here, but when she had seven kids, you know, in her country, she didn't look like she had seven kids. She was a thin woman. Uh -huh. You know, because she walked everywhere. Fit. Yeah. Fit. She was fit, you know, uh, and they had no Eating foods that she recognized. Right. They grew Not, their foods. You read the label. Yeah. Okay, what's in this box? <laughs> they had no processed foods. That, yeah. that was the thing. The town they were in, everything they grew, um, they didn't have any processed foods at all. That was my, that was her lifestyle, her generation. So then she comes to a country where there's food on every corner. Yeah. Well, you know, they, it, we once saw that, uh, for, lack of better yeah, for lack of better terms, you know, <laughs> most immigrants when they move to this country will develop chronic disease within the first five years of living here. Yeah. That has a lot to say about what is our country doing? They did a lot of studies on that. Yeah. Like, you know, Asians that, you know, come here, for example, you know, they're eating fish and rice and then they start eating McDonald's and yeah. next thing you know, they have diabetes and hypertension and cancers. Cancers. Yeah. Yeah. And it's estimated that one out of every three women will get cancer and one out of every two men will get cancer. But why is this? Why are we seeing cancer now? We didn't see it before. You know, it's yeah. not it's not our genes that it's are dictating not, this. No, it's our environment, you know, from all the toxins in the air, the toxins in the water, in our food. You know, we're being we are being poisoned by our environment. The high levels of stress, I mean, it's crazy. Young kids are stressed. So I know several people who work at Phoenix Children's Hospital and there's one nurse, she focuses on the on screening the children for mental health. And in the last three years, um, you know, because of the events that have happened in the world, they've seen more and more children with depression, anxiety, and suicidal ideation. Yeah, and I, I remember she, her telling me there was a six-year-old who attempted suicide, uh, six years old. That's now a five-year-old. I've heard of. She's playing outside and getting dirty and, you know, coloring and playing, being mm -hmm. a kid. Like, what's going on in the lives of these children right. that makes them feel so terrible that they want to end their life? We need to wake up. Yeah. We need to really wake up, not just for ourselves, but for the future, you know, for those children. It, they don't have to be my children to care. Like, we don't need to have children to care about children. Right. We need to worry about what environments they're growing up in. And, you know, I screen... I, I see pediatrics and on, so I see, you know, teenagers and young, you know, 20 year olds, I check their hormones uh -huh. and they're not optimal. For someone that age, you know, I see 40 year olds with better hormones than 20 year olds. 
Yeah. That's a problem. That is. You know, and so those those people are not going to be able to come conceive or, or even have a healthy life. Mm -hmm. By the time they are 30 and 40, they are debilitated. That's that's our future. We're worried about right now about getting people to work, employees to fill in certain roles in society. Yeah, we're not going to have that because these young people are, you know, once again, it's the foods that they're eating. Yeah. And here's the thing. A lot of them are not even eating. They don't have breakfast. They don't have lunch because the school lunch is terrible and it's not cool to take lunch to school, apparently. So they get home and they just binge eat crap, junk food. Yeah. And then they'll have dinner whenever mom gets home. That's what their diet is like. 80% of the patients I work with. That's, yeah, that's their, not good. That's not good. Growing, growing by or yeah. anybody. Yeah. I'm like, you're growing. You need protein. Those yeah. are the building blocks of who you are. You need protein. You need your, your vitamins, your minerals from your foods. You need the healthy fats. Yeah. You know, our hormones our neurotransmitters depend on healthy fats and proteins. So how are you going to have the energy to learn? You're not. The other thing is they're not sleeping. They're, they're staying up on their technology all yeah. night and, it's, and not sleeping. And it's interrupting yeah. the development of their brain. Their brains are still developing. Yeah. So they're not getting that quality of sleep. So, yeah, they're moody. They're irritable. You want to talk about behavioral issues in kids? Yeah, because because of that. The technology, not eating well. And and it's not just eating well, but all the, all the chemicals that are in these foods. All the mm -hmm. food dyes and, you know, all those other things on there that just really compromise their everything their nervous system their immune system everything is just affected by it by that so this is why this is the the introduction to um cancer for them yeah if they don't change it they will have a higher risk of cancer mm -hmm. uh, to me cancer is like the ultimate like hell no <laughs> you know right like i i'm gonna do whatever i can on my part to prevent it for myself and to help my patients prevent it because I do work with cancer patients and I see how much work it takes for me and my patient and the families to reverse this financially, how much they're having to, to invest, right? right? And it's a worthy investment, <laughs> yeah. but it's a, it's, it's a lot. And also mentally, the, 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 the stress of when is this gonna go away? And I'm sure they're thinking, is it gonna go away, uh -huh. you know? And just forever always having to screen, you know, I have patients that reverse the cancer, they're cancer free, but every six months, every year, we're still doing the checkups. And then there's sure. still that fear, oh, I hope it didn't come back, or right. I hope it's gone. It, it, it robs you of your peace. Yeah. So for me, I say, hey, you pay the price now, or you pay the price later. Right. Pay the price now by eating right, exercising, making sure you're sleeping, managing your stress. And there's many ways to manage stress whether it's taking herbal supplements, um, whether it's exercising is a great way to, I mean, that's how I alleviate my stress, mm -hmm. you know, is, you know, go kickboxing, go lift some weights, go hiking. And then I feel like, whoa, the weight of the world just lifted off of me. That's what I want people to understand. That's what exercise can do for you. Yeah. It's a huge stress relief and it'll help you sleep better. When I was in med school, I, I worked out six days you a week. <laughs> I admire that about you. Competed in bodybuilding. And yeah. students that we went to school with would say, how do you have time to work out? And I was like, I don't have time not to work out. Yeah. This is what gets me, I'm, I have mental clarity, I have energy. Everybody was so adrenal fatigued and just exhausted and their eyes and trying to survive on coffee or whatever. And that wasn't me. That wasn't me. And I, I, say that exercise is what got me through mm -hmm. 32 credit hours a term and clinicals yeah. and internships and all these these uh, clinical exams we had to take every year that were tremendous yeah. yeah so exercise can really help us get through life absolutely right? and that was one thing that I admired about you and a couple of other people that I noticed in our in our cohort that they were consistent about exercise mm -hmm. you know I I went in with the mindset of medical school, being realistic about the, the level of stress, the time commitment that we had to do. And going into medical school, I told myself, I, am, I refuse to come out sick. Right. When I finish medical school, I will be healthier than when I started. Mm -hmm. And I did, I accomplished that, you know, by taking care of myself early on. 
And so, um, but yeah, I mean, to be able to compete while you're in medical school, <laughs> that, that is an achievement in and of itself because, I mean, I don't think people understand how involved, you know, medical school is. I mean, I, I couldn't make it to my grandmother's funeral. I had to fly out of the country and it was during finals week. I, I had the same experience. Couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a sacrifice, you know, and it was something that I had to like dig deep down and pray about that. And I, in my spirit, I almost felt like my grandmother's spirit saying, it's okay, I'm already gone, I'm not there. Yeah. And that would be something my grandmother would say, it's like, just do what you have supporting to do. Supporting your goal. Yeah, yeah, supporting me. And just like, don't stress about it. I'm, my, I'm not there anymore mm -hmm. in that body. Right. Uh, but you're, you gotta push through, through this. So I felt peace of that. But there were weddings and things, events that you just, I couldn't make it. Right. Because this was a priority, you know, the, the idea if I don't do these things, I will fail is a hard reality that we all have to face day in and day out. And so I think one of the things that you and I have in common is that we don't give up. No. We, we, we don't like to fail. We're not going to fail. Not, not, not if we have control of right. that outcome. We're going to do our part, give it 100% and, uh, and, and push through. Yeah. So in terms of patients wanting to know about how much services cost or feeling that the services are too expensive, also indicating, well, my insurance doesn't cover it. What kind of comments or response do you have to patients when they bring these things up? So I always start with explaining um, how I work different than conventional doctors. And I explain the different paradigms. So a conventional medical doctor, they need to see 20, 30 plus people a day and they work under the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. And so I bring back to their experience of, you know, well, you're seeing a doctor for a couple minutes and that doesn't really give you much time to, to interact for them to understand and give you the proper recommendations. The other thing is that they're heavily relying on insurance companies to cover that, that expense. Uh, and so there's a lot of rules that uh, patients don't understand how insurance works. There's a lot of rules and guidelines uh, that doctors need to follow in order to be compliant under the insurance system. Mm -hmm. If they don't, then they can lose a contract with that insurance company. And so um, insurance in a way dictates to doctors how they operate. Mm -hmm. I always tell them you know, that uh, who pays the doctor is who makes the call, mm -hmm. you know? So if a doctor's, if, if I'm taking insurance, then the insurance is my boss, because I have to listen to them. I have to listen to their rules, follow their rules, in order for them to cover my patient's, you know, bill. Mm -hmm. If I don't, I'm out. They won't, they won't want to work with me. Uh, now, when you look at the naturopathic doctor, the patients pay me directly, mm -hmm. so I work for my patient. We cut the middlemen out. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't have to run under the rules and guide and guidelines of an insurance company, which they are not doctors to begin with. Right. So they should not dictate to the doctor how they wish to, you know, treat their patient. Mm -hmm. the The treatment uh, plan is between the doctor and the patient. It's mm -hmm. between us two. So you're getting a whole different experience, a whole different quality of care. Um, and yes, you, you may have to pay for the services, but the outcomes are where the benefit is, is at. So you might have to pay for that visit or the therapies and your insurance not covering. But, the, but long term, you are saving yourself money and time. You really are because you're going to get better through your illness. You're gonna, your energy is going to improve. Your mental clarity is going to improve. You're gonna be able to work better, be more efficient in your job, which will help you produce more income potentially, you know, and that's what I usually see in my patients, is they get better, and so they have better opportunities because now they're healthier. Um, so you may have to make an investment. I always change the, I try to change the words that they use to explain that the, the experience they're gonna have is better, the relationship is completely different. Yeah. And because of that, they're going to see results. Mm -hmm. They're going to see results, and it's going to save you time and hassle. You know, I've had people with lupus, 
Yeah, that's a very debilitating condition. Yeah, absolutely. And the insurance will cover your rheumatologist and all the specialists and all of that. All of that. You might have some out of pocket in that. That's what insurance is doing now, though. That people are having out of pocket <clears throat> expenses regardless of insurance. Yeah. So you're still making an investment after you've paid your premiums. You have maybe some out of pocket costs with these doctors, and uh, you know, um, nine out of ten people are not feeling better through that experience. But when someone comes and sees me, you know, yeah, they're making the initial investment up front and we're getting them to where they need to where they're, they're feeling better. They're not having to come as often, maybe every three months or six months. Yeah. Right. Right. And so they, they can live a quality of life. So we can't just get fixated on, well, that's expensive because I'm going to tell you, people find, they find a way to pay for things that are not bringing them value. Yeah, like what are they paying for that, you know, they're, they're not thinking about a $5, exactly. $7 coffee a day. Right, little things, it could be little things like yeah. $7 a coffee, the average meal, 15 to $20 if you eat out on a, you know, not even a high-end restaurant, just something kind of fast food, yeah, you know. that would be high-end. <laughs> yeah, not, not at all, but you know, they're, they're, you know, an average if you're eating out 15, 20 bucks that you're spending to eat out, like all of these things that add up. But here's the other thing too, is that I have people who are spending money on expensive shoes and purses and clothing. They're traveling, you know, they're financing some of these things. They never, they think that paying for your health care it's someone else's responsibility. Yeah, right. You know, instead of seeing it as I'm investing in my wellness and my health so that I can be better, more optimal, um, so I can live a better life, a quality life, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I always make sure I explain that it, there is a, a difference, that you might have to invest money. And you know, I don't force anyone to, to do anything. If you think my services are too expensive, uh, go back to your insurance model. There's a reason why you're looking for a doctor, you know, and when a doctor's good and they value their time, they're also going to want to work with patients who are dedicated, you know, and they're going to do their part. So if you're looking for a $50 doctor, uh, keep looking. Yeah. Keep looking mm -hmm. because my time is valuable and I know my areas of expertise. I know how this works. I know what to look for. We're not going to waste time. No, we're not gonna. Not. We're not guessing here. Mm -hmm. We're doing. I, I always say I'm an, a medical investigator. <laughs> I'm investigating what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. You know, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. You're getting a lot of value for for meeting with a naturopathic doctor. You you don't get that value with insurance. Insurance won't cover us because of the amount of time we spend with a, a person. You know, if I worked with insurance. I actually looked at this early on in my practice, mm -hmm. and um, when I met with the the this person would help practices set up insurance. He said, "Look, he said I don't recommend as a naturopathic doctor that you work with insurance because you have to work with the top five insurance companies, and you'd have to pay someone uh, who's going to do all the billing, who's going to chase the money right. to make it uh, make it work for you, mm -hmm. and." Uh, he said, and you would have to see significantly a lot more patients. Where if I'm spending, you know, 90 minutes on a new patient, an hour on follow-ups, 30 minutes maybe on follow-ups, or an hour on a therapy, um, you know, I can't see 30 people in a day. No, There's right. no way, uh -huh. you know. And so then I would have to change my whole model of how I work with people. I'm not willing to compromise the quality of service, the time, uh, the energy, that I invest in, in a patient who is willing to pay me, right. I'm not willing to compromise that right. for someone who wants to be cheap and wants their insurance to cover it. Mm -hmm. You can't have it both. You can't have it both ways. I'm sorry. I personally stepped out of the conventional medical system as a patient, and I was willing to pay someone who knew what they were doing, mm -hmm. and they got me where I needed to be. And it was the best investment ever. So tell us about your experience. Yeah, you know, I was 27 years old and I had been hustling and bustling all my life. You know, burning the candle on both ends, going to college full time, working full time. I was an overachiever and I did great in my job. I was a top performer in my industry. But things changed over time. I started to feel tired and slowing down and, you know, cognitive function started to decline. and. 
eventually it, it took a lot a lot of years for me to make it into a doctor so i finally got into a doctor i was 27 years old i'm getting diagnosed with hypothyroidism i didn't even know what a thyroid gland was because uh -huh. medicine was not my background business right. was right so i was an educated person but i didn't know what a thyroid was and you know this is 2006 thyroid was not talked about the way it is now Oh, I remember yeah. <laughs> doing the research. There was nothing on the internet then. Mm -hmm. Now there's books and there's podcasts and there's people who just specialize on thyroid health. Because it's so common. Because it's so common. Yeah. But I remember asking the doctor, what causes this? And she says, we don't know. But here's a <laughs> medication. You got to take it for the rest of your life. And so she tells me you have diabetes. Your liver function is not working. Her initial approach to me was, um, uh, you know, on a... Are you able to take time off from from work and from school because i was finishing up my bachelor's at the time uh -huh. and i said uh well i'm sure i could but why would i do that and she said because you really should be admitted to the hospital right now with the liver enzymes the way they were and other markers that were so off she was concerned for me and she thought i should go to the hospital and get the blood sugars and everything under control mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um i said well i'm not going to do that why don't you tell me what i need to do because I'm not gonna stop working. I'm right. not gonna take time off. I was like a month away from finishing my bachelor's. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I wasn't gonna do that. And so she took all her scripts and gave me all these medications. And I'm like, well, what is this for? And how long do I take this? And she said, for the rest of your life. So I sat and negotiated with her. I'm like, I'm not taking that drug. I know this one's not good and I'm not that one. What are the other options? I asked about diet. No, there was no change I had to make at all. Just take these medications and you're fine. That's what I was told. Mm -hmm. After every follow-up visit, I asked, you know, well, can I speak to a nutritionist? Maybe there's something I, I need to eat different. Um, and they did sign, set me up with a nutritionist. It was a joke. Now what I know, and when I look back at what I was told to do, it was a complete joke of how they were telling someone with diabetes how to eat. <laughs> I thought that I would never, what we know. Yeah, from, now from what yeah, I know, yeah, I would never tell a person with diabetes <laughs> to eat those things at yeah. all. Um, those would be the first things like, to go. What was it like the food pyramid? The food pyramid, yeah. You Standard. know, you, you still do your grains and your breads and all of that pot. They were still integrating all of those things. Where, for my patients, I keep it pretty basic. I'm like, look, if you eat protein and your veggies with minimal fruit, like low glycemic fruit, you're gonna do fine. Uh -huh. And we just need to make sure you're eating at the right times. Because I wasn't eating breakfast. I was, oh. had, I was my typical patient. I was eating later in the day and yeah. not, nothing earlier. And so um, I stayed in that model. Uh, my labs, everything was fine over you know a three month period, but I felt worse. I felt worse because I had now all the side effects from the medications, and you know I started to take some things into my own hands and make changes. But it was about six, seven, almost seven years until I started to feel better through wow. just my own trial and error. Um, and then when I did get significantly better, I still felt like there's something that's off. 95% of the time I felt great, but I was avoiding gluten. I was avoiding, you know, the sugar. I was avoiding MSGs, a, a lot of, pro I didn't have any processed food, but every once in a while I would feel, you know, not well. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I stepped out of the conventional medical system. My insurance covered everything, but of course. they didn't do anything for me. Because they you know? like keeping you functionally ill. Yeah. You, you become a long-term yeah. customer Absolutely. that way. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You're, you're uh, like a processing plant. You just go through the line. Mm -hmm. And um, and I noticed that early on. Because when I started to make the changes on my own, and the diabetes reversed, and I lost tons of weight, and I was feeling better, when I went back to my doctor, she's like, oh, the medicine's working. I said, no, it's not the medicine. And she's like, well, what did you do? I said, I changed my diet and I started exercising. And I remember she cocked her head like, no, really, what did you do? Like, she didn't believe me. And I just laughed. I said, I don't know what is it about you doctors that you don't see the value of what we eat makes a difference in our body. Uh -huh. And so at that point, I was like, I'm done with you. I'm done with this system. Um, and I kept searching. Once again, the seeking part, I mm -hmm. was seeking for different, something different. And I found a doctor, he was actually a chiropractor, but he was doing functional medicine. Okay. And I went to see him and he, he told me, he congratulated me. <laughs> That's what For he, figuring things out on your own? He was so impressed. Yeah. And I was so shocked at his reaction. We spent like two hours together. Wow. I have never, <laughs> never, I didn't even know 
what that was gonna be like. I was so happy. And I remember I cried out of joy to see a doctor acknowledge me, to hear me, mm -hmm. to respect me, and then to congratulate me and say, wow, you did this all on your own? <laughs> like you're 90% you're there of what I would have you change. That's so true. the changes yeah. you need to make are very little. And I was like, I, I, I saw hope. Mm -hmm. I, I had hope now that we're gonna get to the bottom of this. So he did, he, he took me through, he had me do, you know, labs, um, a lot more labs than, you know, any of the other doctors that I had insurance because insurance yeah. wasn't going to do it for, for, uh, for us. No. He did all these tests and that's when he said, oh, you don't have a thyroid issue. You have an autoimmune issue. I had Hashimoto's. Well, the uh, approach to Hashimoto's is very different than just someone not making a thyroid hormone. My problem wasn't that my thyroid wasn't making the hormone. It was me and my immune system was attacking my thyroid right. black. A whole different, uh, you know, scenario of what's going on right. and the pr approach is very different. So I worked with him and in a very short time, I mean, three months, six months, I mean, I felt better every month. Like I was a hundred percent. And if it wasn't for me investing the money for the appointment, the labs, the, the supplements, the treatments he put me on, I would never have thought about going to medical school. There's yeah. no way. Interesting. No yeah. way. Because what my, my two main symptoms, concerns that I had was fatigue and memory concentration, which uh -huh. are the things that you need to get through medical school. Right, or anything There's in life, anything. right? I don't know anybody that Any, Yeah, you about need the energy, you energy need to you mentally be there to, mm -hmm. to learn, to memorize, to concentrate on things. And had a, if it wasn't for that investment, because that's what it was, it was an invest in, investment in my health and my right. wellness. Mm -hmm. That turned things around, and when I felt better, I, that's when the, the idea was like, how many people are out there struggling with chronic disease, and they're so sick and miserable, and they might not be as determined as me, they might not be seeking, they might believe everything their doctor is telling them, and think this is it, there's no solution. They I don't know they have a choice. They don't yeah. know their, that's the thing is, yeah. a lot of people don't know their options. They don't know what choices they're out there. They don't know the, 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 the not the alternative, but the options that they have right. to get themselves better. And so through that, I thought, I, I wanna go back and I wanna be a doctor, but I don't wanna be a medical doctor. Right. I knew that from the get go. We're not gonna play that in that playground. <laughs> no. We're not playing in that playground. I need to do something different. Pretty cattle. I looked at this doctor who helped me and I'm like, I want to do what he's doing, but I don't want to go become a chiropractor and then learn all those other things. So I thought maybe I have to go to medical school and then learn all these natural ways. So then uh, it was actually a chiropractor friend of mine who said, uh, you know, there's a naturopathic medical school here. Why don't you look into it? <laughs> and I did that same week. Uh -huh. Next week I was visiting the school and I'm like, this is it. This is, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. My decision was made very quick. And that's the other thing, when you are healthy, yeah. physically and mentally, emotionally, you will make decisions that quick. Yeah. Because you're clear. You're, you, it's like this glass of water, it's clear. Yeah. If I throw mud and dirt in there, it's gonna be muddy. It's not clear. Mm -hmm. But when you have clarity in your, in your physical body, in your, in your mind, it's either good or not. And, and my decision was made that quick. Uh -huh. This was like November of like 20, 12 and I immediately signed up for classes to start uh, like I had to get all my prerequisites since, since I didn't have a background in medicine right mm -hmm, right so January of 2013 I started doing all my prerequisites and I made it happen to where I can get waived out of all these other ones that I didn't need yeah to just go right into the organic chemistry biochemistry and got all of that done in one year wow there's no yeah. way there's no way i would have done that two years before right because you couldn't think i couldn't, couldn't think yeah. i was super depressed didn't even know i was depressed fatigued i, I could sleep all day and i still felt tired mm -hmm. you know i was forgetting things left and right uh sometimes i would uh, roll through a stop sign thinking did i stop <laughs> or did I just roll through? Like, that's a safety issue. That's dangerous. <laughs> it was dangerous, and I was terrified. I would feel bad because I'm not an irresponsible person. But here I was behaving in such a way, not because I intentionally was, but because my brain just wasn't connected, right? right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I mean, this is this is my life for many years. Uh, but then, like I said, um, and then in 2014, I started medical school right away. 
um, but that's that's what I tell people that's that was my journey of getting out of you know what I call the mob the mafia of insurance in that system yeah and going to seeing someone who first of all cared about me they listened to me they respected me and they were willing to guide me through that process they knew what they were doing this was his this was his jam yeah he knew this in and out what he had to test and he told me you know insurance is not going to want to cover this that's okay i will pay cash for it yep. i was desperate <laughs> i was desperate i will pay to figure out if this is the problem and that was everything was there that we needed to fix that's what we do for our patients yeah you know, we're trying to break them out of prison, not keep them in prison. Right. So why would you want to continue to use insurance? Hey, you know, I'm in prison. I've got three hots and a cot, but is that really the way you want to spend your life, right? I mean, right. it's the same thing. I mean, we're making choices for our health. <clears throat> when we make choices for our health and our well-being, we have quality of life, Absolutely. not just existence. That, that was exactly it. Yeah. I felt like I was just dragging my body in this life. I always used to tell my colleagues, I feel like my soul is dragging my body in this life like I'm not really here mm -hmm. I felt like I was half half alive and half dead that's misery I was like what foot in the grave that's not <laughs> it and I, mean, I was how 27 people, how many people are living that yeah way? a lot yeah, of people a lot of people and and that was my wake-up call and I know that that was meant to be my process and journey because that's what makes me the doctor that I am today right I listen with compassion I'm, I'm seeking to understand my patient and how to better guide them without judgment, mm -hmm. you know, and, and but being compassionate and saying, okay, these these things in your life, we need to change and we need to start little, everyone's different. That's yeah. the other thing too. Some people jump right in. We don't do cookie ready. cutter treatments no. as naturopaths. So uh -uh. we, we do individualize uh, as much as we can to each patient mm -hmm. uh, and help them where we meet them where they're at and guide them from there, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, that's my approach to insurance is if you want insurance, then keep, keep going through the model that you're going through. Yeah. 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 Because otherwise we have to play by their rules and then we can't <laughs> practice what we, how we were trained to, to practice using the therapeutics that we were trained to use. We can't operate under that model. I'm no. sorry. That's, that's not something I decided. That's just the way it is. It's just the way it and is. And what's a common theme of a patient that comes to you? Or is it somebody who's sick and tired of having been in the system? Or is it somebody who already knows that naturopathic medicine is for them? What, what do you see the most? I see more people uh, that are sick and tired of going through that process line and not getting anywhere. Uh -huh. um, you know, the last three years has created a huge shift in mindset of people where there's some that are not necessarily sick and ill, but they're like, hey, I know I'm going to have to see a doctor, but I want to have the right doctor on my side. Mm -hmm. I want a doctor who knows that if if I'm ill, like what what do we do to prevent illness? But if I'm ill, that I can feel safe going to this doctor and they're going to properly help me and guide me through that. But there is a lot of people who are just sick and tired of going through the standard you know, medical system mm -hmm. and not getting anywhere. They're not getting results. If anything, they're getting worse. Yeah. Um, once again, you have one foot in the grave. And then they tell them, well, you're just getting old. Yeah. <laughs> that is never... And you're 30 years old. <laughs> and it, that's never anything I ever tell a patient, no matter no. what their age is. It's not age. It's that there is a solution to every problem, right? Absolutely. I have a patient. She's amazing. She's like 96 years old, and you would think she's 50. <laughs> she's just... She looks healthy. Her skin is great. Her hair is great. Her health is great. And, and she only comes to me for her annual, you know, exams to see where she's at. And I've asked her so many questions in that time, especially initially, like, what do you think contributed to your health, you being so healthy and being 96? Mm -hmm. This woman walks and she hikes, she's active. She's always been active, but here's what she said to me. She said, you know, honey, she says, I've always slept really good. I have never cheated myself on sleep. Mm -hmm. That's the one constant. The other thing, she's always ate whole foods. She eats real food. So those two things just, you know, sleeping well and eating well, what a concept. You see, you don't have to go invest money and see a doctor. You can start with those things. Now, if you don't have the discipline to change your diet and eat well and manage the other foundational things right in health, then that's when you seek for someone who can help you get there. Yeah. And, you know, 
unfortunately people who have debilitating chronic disease they're so fatigued that they don't know where to start yeah. they need guidance they need someone to shine light and guide them through that and then once they get there they take off they have no hope and yeah. the doctor they're working with isn't giving them hope yeah yeah usually just the opposite <laughs> yeah so it's scary mm -hmm. um, I always am cautious about speaking negative about you know, doctors and people in healthcare. Yeah. Because I know that the intention for them was always to help people. Yes, absolutely. So mm -hmm. I feel like the system that they're working in, though, it doesn't it doesn't work. And you know, a lot of doctors um, are working for a corporation. Yes. Uh huh. And um, there's I I've noticed that even in the area that I'm in, a lot of the doctors who used to have their own clinical practices, mm -hmm. they have sold it to a, a larger entity to take over so when you do that you lose a lot of um, how you want to practice yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's the one thing I like about being uh, you know having my own clinic right is I call the shots how my business is going to operate and I do not allow anything to influence or interfere with the integrity of the relationship with my patients at all yeah and yeah. that's the best feeling it is. I have feeling. control of that. Yeah. And you're and because I don't work with insurance, I don't have to worry about someone dictating to me. I will share this with you though. In the last couple years, what I have noticed is for my patients who have insurance, because we can still do labs with the insurance companies, yeah. and they can still pay for their prescription medications, mm -hmm. as long as it's not Medicare or Access, right? Right. Medicare Access, it won't cover a naturopath anywhere. Uh -uh. But if it's private insurance, you know labs and medications can get covered not the natural therapeutics but the medications yeah um those individuals if i prescribe say metformin to someone who um, that's the route we're going to take for mm -hmm. blood sugar control mm -hmm. i put them on metformin the pharmacy has started to send me a notice saying hey we noticed and this is the insurance telling the pharmacist to let me know that this person that i put on metformin should also be on a statin drug to protect their kidneys. Mm -hmm. Well, why? Why? Yeah, I'm the doctor. Right. I did the labs. I see their kidney function is great. Right, and we're going to continue to. There's monitor no that. cholesterol. Right. Yeah. Why am I going to put them on a statin drug? Because there's other things that we're doing. We're doing the diet. We're doing herbal stuff. We're doing other things to help them with managing the diabetes. Right. So why is why is the insurance company? interfering with that relationship, telling the pharmacist to let me know, hey, I need to prescribe a statin drug to my patient. No, that's not the, people, doctors need to stand up to that and say no. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You don't tell me uh -huh. how to treat my patient. That's between me and my patient. I can't tell you how many times I've done that. <laughs> it's it's, it's a, gone out of control these last down. couple years. Yeah. And that's just one example of how insurance interferes and starts to dictate. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's more of an expense for them to cover. Why, why? And these are the kinds of things I tell my patients. The other thing too is um, patients will bring in their, their labs, their, uh, their statement from their insurance company. Oh, uh -huh. right, when they get their labs done, that I recommend let's do these labs. They'll bring in the statement and it'll be the, the fees of all the labs and then what they owe to the insurance company. Mm -hmm. There's one particular um, scenario that I remember. It was like $3,100 for the labs. And the out-of-patient cost to the, the out-of-patient, the out-of-pocket uh, out cost of the patient was um, like $380 of that 3100 Interesting. And so I told the patient, man, this is, this is really sad. You know, these exact same labs, I can run with a, a cash pay company for $200, $250, yep. <laughs> which is less than what you're paying out-of-pocket to them. Yes. Uh-huh. This is why we don't work with insurance. This is why. This yeah. is why. Because we have a better And so, option. yeah, yeah. we have better options. Mm -hmm. This is going to save you money. So I usually, so the patients are like, well, can we just use that lab next time? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because when we use this other lab, you will know exactly the price that you're paying for those labs. Absolutely. Yep. There won't be any surprises. If it says $253.82, that's what you're going to pay that's, them. And, and there's no surprises. Done. No right. surprises. Yep. And so that's the other reason why we don't like working with insurance because there's always that, hey, by the way, you still owe this amount or they're not wanting to cover certain things. You know, I mean, you do a lot of regenerative medicine, so I'm sure you're doing like MRIs and scans, right? Sometimes yep. for joints. 
you know, insurance says, well, we first have to start with an x-ray. Well, maybe that x-ray for what you're looking for, it's, it's irrelevant. It is. X-ray is not most of the time, right? Yeah. We know that the patient doesn't have a fracture. It's a soft tissue injury. So why are we spending the money on x-ray before we do an MRI? Exactly. And then sometimes they don't even approve the MRI. I had recently had a patient who, she has a shoulder issue, sent her for an MRI, and I, they, the insurance company wanted me to send her clinical notes. I got her approval or her okay, her consent to send them. So I just sent them what they needed. And then they had the gall to tell the patient, well, we're gonna approve it, but we don't see why you need it. Well, guess what? She has a tear. That's something I can fix. Yeah. That's something I can fix. I'm the doctor. Yeah. So that's something I'm commonly up against. Exactly. With insurance companies. Now, everything else being equal, I mean, I could tell the patient, here's your order for an MRI. It'll cost you $300 if you want to pay cash, or we can fight with the insurance company to get it covered. And I ultimately don't know what the patient had to pay for that. Maybe it was 50 bucks or I don't know, but there might've been some expense to her but was it really worth it? Yeah. You know? Most of the time what I see is when it's run through insurance, if they cover, if even if they cover it, there's the, the out of pocket, it's still higher than if they wouldn't pay cash. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like they'll still pay four or $500 for the MRI yeah. because the insurance is, you know, charged 1500, yeah. right? Um, and so, yeah, that's... These companies, uh, they bump up their prices significantly when they're running it through insurance versus their, the person <clears throat> paying cash. Right. Here's a pet peeve of mine that I do get from, not my patients, obviously, but I hear from other people when they're inquiring about a naturopathic doctor or, and, and these are, I always am mindful that these are people who are not very respectful and um, not the most intelligent you know, people sometimes, it, and that is when they make a comment of, you're just in it for the money. <laughs> and you know, I laugh, I right? say, you know how much orthopedic <laughs> surgeons get paid for what they do? Yeah. They're probably up in the 500000 Let me tell pay. you guys, naturopathic doctors <laughs> do not just go in it for the money. Oh, no. The majority of naturopathic doctors that go into this kind of medicine is because we have a personal history, a personal story we have a big reason of calling to do this kind of medicine, right? Absolutely. So yeah. it's not, we, what we invest into our education, it's hundreds and thousands of dollars. Literally. Literally. I have right? a half million dollar school. Yeah. yeah. Most people half end up two million. to three hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. in student loan debt after getting through medical, just the medical school part of it. Right. So are we in there for the money? No, we're not. We understand what we're up against and there's a lot of hard work to do. So, but that person won't ask, you know, if, if they buy a pair of Nikes that cost them $150, they don't ask Nike or they don't tell Nike, you're just in it for the money. Cause guess what? They are just in it for the money. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? We need to wear shoes, but that's not like a life changing experience. Right. For a you. pair of cheap shoes for five bucks. I mean, I'm not recommending that, right. but you know, it's like, what is your, What's your intention for buying these shoes? Right. Status. I want to, you know, impress people. Well, if you really want to impress people, get your health in order. Because Absolutely. when you're in shape and you've got cognitive function and you are performing at a high level and you're manifesting success in your life, that's how you impress people. Not by going out and spending 200, even a thousand dollars on a purse. That's not. Right. Those what. companies are just in it for the money. And here's the other thing is, I mean, we need companies to run labs and imaging, but those companies are charging their insurance that much more money because they are in it for the money. Right. You know, so we are charging for our value and our time, our expertise. Here's the other thing about naturopathic doctors is that I, I don't I don't cheapen myself and say I'm a primary care or I, right. I'm not. I, I offer primary care sure. services right. to my patients, but we're specialists in what we do. We have a level of expertise in, in what we do in our realm and a much more well-rounded um, knowledge on the human body, on the, on the mental, emotional aspects of healing. We, we have an understanding of integrating all of that. Yeah. So it, you know, it's not fair to even make the comparison to <laughs> seeing a conventional doctor. I mean, they're yeah. good at diagnosing and the, the pharmacology of it. Um, but but if you want to get results and you want to reverse disease, 
you need to see a naturopathic doctor. Yeah, because they're not in to re they're, they're not, not in it to reverse. They have no intention on getting you better. Their whole goal is to manage your symptoms over your lifetime, and you will get worse. And you will need another pharmaceut pharma uh, pharmaceutical for this symptom, which will cause other symptoms you'll need another drug for. It's not uncommon that I've seen patients come to me and be on 15 different medications. Oh yeah. And I've been able to get them off everything. Um, I had one patient, I have one patient, he came to me, he was on a few medications, including three blood pressure medications. Mm -hmm. He was overweight, stressed, tired. I mean, he just, the works, didn't have a good diet. He was very compliant with treatment. And as we moved through the healing process, we were down to one, off all of his medications, down to one low dose antihypertensive. That was it. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I am happy with that. He didn't have the side effects he was having from all the you know, pharma, uh, polypharmacy and he was just feeling so much better. People don't need all these pills. Yeah. The reason they're on these pills is because they're never told that they have another option, right. that there are solutions to the problem. There are solutions to every problem. Absolutely. And nobody but a naturopathic medical doctor will tell you that right. when it comes to your health.